The coast constitutes an, impo an important boundary. It's a physical boundary, as it is the zone where the land, the ocean and the atmosphere meet. It also, it's also a conceptual boundary between the known and the comparably unknown, but it also forms a jurisdictional boundary or a cultural boundary. Many people define the coast as the place where the land and the ocean meet, but a, a, an actual definition of the coast is much more complex than, than this. The coast can be intuitively seen as a line due to its boundary nature, but at the same time, it's often seen as a zone. Does it include land? Does it include the sea? To what extent? This is not very easy to answer unless we're looking at the specific, uh, uh, specific processes. The intuitive way in which the coast is depicted in maps as, a, as the coastline or the shoreline does not often describe the nature of the coast. From the, from the side of the sea, we have marine processes, such as waves and tides. Waves represent the most dominant source of near shore energy along most coastlines, whereas tides are essentially variations of water levels due to the gravitational effects of the, of the sun and the moon. These result in variations of the level of, of the water at diurnal or semi-diurnal basis, for example, and shape characteristic coastal landscapes working together with the geomorphic characteristics or the climate characteristics of a coastal system. The natural systems eventually include distinct features and ecosystems such as rocky coasts, beaches, barriers, sand dunes, estuaries or lagoons, deltas. And these elements, in many cases, help define the seaward and landward boundaries of the coast, using the definition of the coast being as the place where the land meets, uh, where the, land meets the water may extend, for example, the coastal zone several kilometers inland, where the effects of coastal flooding can, uh, can reach in nations like such as Bangladesh or the Netherlands. From the side of the land, we have terrestrial processes, such as the discharge of rivers into the coastal ocean, which brings sediment and water in coastal places. At the same time, we have to keep in mind that the coastal zone is one of the most densely populated zones on Earth. It has a population density, which can be two to three times higher than the population density further inland and includes many of the world's largest urban centers. So we have a high concentration of population and therefore assets which come along with the population in the coastal zone. We believe that more than 10% of the global population lives in the low elevation coastal zone, which is the, the land area with an elevation below 10 meters, uh, hydrologically connected to the sea is, uh, uh, represents only 2% of the global land area and includes more than 10% of the global population. Humans therefore have a, a large impact on the coast. At the same time, they're affecting natural coastal processes by, for example, building ports, uh, which may affect the tidal range, block sediment transport, but at the same time, by extracting groundwater and oil resources from the land and initiating processes such as land subsidence. Humans also affect uh, natural processes far away from the coast by, for example, damming ri rivers or deforesting land leading to increased erosion and therefore increased sediment supply at the coast. We have examples where humans have shaped deltas by deforesting land to be used for agriculture and increasing sediment supply to the coast, to the coastal ocean or places that are subject to severe erosion because of blocking sediment due to river damming. The short animation uh, shows the, the in installation of large water, the construction of large water reservoirs during the last 150 years and gives a good impression of how humans are affecting the discharge of sediment to the ocean. These large water reservoirs, usually dammed, result, um, withhold sediment, which eventually does not reach the delta or the river mouth and leading to processes such as uh, increased coastal erosion. We therefore need to, to look at the coast as a system which comprises a, a natural subsystem and a human subsystem. And we need to study the interactions of these two systems in order to be able to understand how the coast will respond to natural, for example, climatic or socioeconomic uh, pressures.